YouTube theologians, Blessed Trinity Sunday. You want to know what the ASL, what the sign is for Trinity? I think it's like this. Ready? Three and one. <laughs> Isn't that great? Today is Trinity Sunday, uh, which is the octave of Pentecost. So Pentecost was uh, well, eight days ago. And, uh, and now, eight days later, we rejoice in the in the confession of the Holy Trinity, the first and greatest mystery of the Christian faith. There are, well, I don't know, it depends on how you want to count the mysteries, but there's at least two, maybe three great mysteries of the Christian faith. Number one, the mystery of the Trinity. Number two, the mystery of the Incarnation. Number three, the mystery of our redemption. But the first and greatest is the Trinity, that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, there's a lot going on there. In fact, I gotta, I gotta think about the Trinity. I've been reading a bunch of stuff on the Trinity because uh, issues, etc., is come. Oh, which reminds me, I wanted to say thank you to all of you YouTube theologians for hanging around. This last week, we passed one million views. Uh, so that means. All three of you guys watched the videos 333,000 something times. It's amazing. You guys are very dedicated. But thank you. It's humbling. Anyway, and the guys over at Issues want me to talk about the Trinity this summer. So Issues Etc., which is great, has a conference every summer, which is great. And I promised I'd come because Al Mohler was coming which was going to be great. But then they moved the time because of COVID, which is, I guess you have to. And then Al Morley can't make it. So anyway, alas, dreams are crushed. One day I'll get to meet Al Mohler. I found out, I was listening to the this new podcast called The World and Everything in It, and they did an interview with Al Mohler because I guess he's on their board of directors. And he was 33 years old when he started as president of Southern Seminary. 33! It's the same age that Jesus was when he was crucified. And I imagine Al Mohler thought that was what was going to happen to him when he got there. Well, uh, but anyway, the guys at Issues want me to talk about the Trinity, making the case for the Trinity. What's amazing is that any time we talk about the Trinity, it, it grows out of and it leads to worship doxology, praise, that we, in the end, what we cannot comprehend because of both the finitude of our minds and the greatness of God's glory, simply in the, it, it, in the end, it makes our minds simply bow in wonder to this truth, that there is one God, three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God be praised. Beautiful. There's a lot of things to explore when it comes to the doctrine of the Trinity. Maybe we should just hit a couple of the basics. Number one is that the assertion of the theology of the Trinity comes from these five biblical statements. Number one, there is one God. Number two, the Father's God. Number three, the Son is God. Number four, the Holy Spirit is God. Number five, the Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is not the Father, and so forth. So all those assertions put together, really that's, I think, about as simple as you can get the doctrine of the Trinity. Um, and even though it's true that the word Trinity is not in the Bible, those five truths are taught in the Scripture, and that is what the doctrine means. So if you want to call it something else, I suppose that's fine, as long as that's what you're saying. Uh, we worship the Trinity in unity and the unity of Trinity, in unity and Trinity. That's how we confess it in the Athanasian Creed. And there's something about the doctrine of the Trinity that's really wonderful. I'm, I'm meditating on this, trying to understand a little bit better. But it is this, and that is that there is, there is, there is, a, there is other within the unity of God. Ravi Zacharias, who died a couple of weeks ago, I was sad to hear that. Ravi Zacharias would always talk about this whenever he would talk about the Trinity, and he would say that 
humanity was always on the hunt for the university, for the unity and diversity. That's what the university came from, for that hunt for the unity within the diversity. And they could never find it because they never, because they didn't know the doctrine of the Holy Trinity. But the doctrine of the Holy Trinity is where that kind of eternal pursuit of philosophy actually comes to a close. Here is God, three in one. Three persons, one God. And the reason why this is so important, at least, I mean, there's lots of reasons why it's important. I mean, because it's, first of all, because it's true. But second of all, because what, what this means is that, that the essence of God can be love. If you don't, because if, so for example, imagine it this way. If God were simply radically one, there was no other within the unity of the divine Godhead. If God was simply one, then there's no other in eternity. Only God in eternity. Because being eternal is one of the attributes of God. And therefore, because they're in this radical oneness, there is no other. Therefore, there can be no love because there's no object of love. Love always requires an object. But because God is eternally Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, because there is in eternity all three persons, therefore there can be in eternity love of the Father for the Son and of the Son for the Holy Spirit and of the Holy Spirit for the Father and the Son and so forth. So that Christianity, and Christianity alone, can say that God is love. How about that? I mean, everybody likes love. (laughs) Who doesn't like love? That's a kind of funny thing to say. Everybody likes love. Do you like love? I like love. Do you? (laughs) Everybody likes love. And probably everybody likes love because we're created in the image of God, who is love. There's an eternal conversation with God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In fact, I think those best parts of the Bible are where we are, we're overhearing this conversation between the Father and the Son. Today you're, uh, I, uh, you are my Son. Today I have begotten you. Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Oh, oh beautiful text. Beautiful text. <laughs> So that in eternity, God is love. And God can send. God sends the Son. This whole sending and receiving. In fact, it's Pastor Graff was, was talking about this, how it's the very nature of God to give. And, and that can't be the case if God is radically one. But because we have, we have God as Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, there's this giving, even self-giving. And how about this? I was listening to some guy... I should probably remember these people's names. They're like respected theologians and probably wouldn't appreciate being called some guy, but anyway, I can't remember his name. And he was British-ish. He had some kind of accent. I can't, it was Scottish or Irish or British. I think he was Scottish. He was lecturing about something. I think I posted it up on the Wednesday whatnot. If you're not subscribed to the Wednesday Whatnot, you should be. We give away a free book every month. Link in description. (laughs) What a YouTuber thing to do. Don't forget to subscribe. Click the notification bell. Anyhow, uh, he was talking about this. Ooh, this is nice. How the thing that brings the most delight and joy to God the Father is knowing the Son. Can can you imagine how, because God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, there's room for humility in the midst of majesty? Because the Father's delight is not in knowing Himself and His own glory. The Father's delight is in knowing the Son. and giving glory to the Son. I mean, this is this this majestic stuff of, like in Isaiah it says, I am the Lord, I share my glory with no other. And then Jesus says, 
Father, you have given me your glory. You've glorified me. And the Father, we hear the voice of God the Father like three times in the, not like three times, three times in the New Testament at the baptism of Jesus, at the transfiguration of Jesus, and then right before the crucifixion of Jesus and John. And Jesus says, glorify your name. And he says, I've glorified it and I will glorify it again. So that they, get the, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are sharing their glory with one another. Oh, man. So that there's humility and the, there's a giving and there's another, an otherness even in the divine Godhead. So the Father's greatest joy is knowing the Son. And he says to you, listening to me, whoever you are, you and to me and to all the Christians, to all people, but we Christians know this. He says, the thing that the God the Father says, the thing that I love the most, the thing that delights me most, knowing the Son, I'm going to share with you so that you can know the Son too. And you can have the same joy that I have. So God says, here's what makes me happy, and I want you to be made happy with the same thing, knowing the Son. So that Jesus says, this is eternal life, that you know the Father and the Son that he sent. It's a joy that is so, it's a joy that's so profound it, it, it's almost like it, it's almost like you're too happy to even be able to die. That's what God does. He says, I'm going to give you a, the, the eternal life that we have is that you have such good news that you become like unkillable. Do you remember how in what is it, in Mary Poppins, how they were they were telling jokes? Remember Bert was telling jokes and they were so happy that they were floating. <laughs> they were la they were so happy that they were like floating to the ceiling. And uh, th this is this is something like that when God the Father says, "I'm going to tell you something, and it's going to make you so happy that you're not nobody's going to be able to kill you." And that's that I'm sending my Son, and He's not coming to condemn you, but to save you, forgive you. Ah! Oh! Do you know that this? You know how when like the kids see something that makes them so happy, or like when I see a, like a Jim Gaffigan move, uh, YouTube video and it makes me laugh, and I'm just like, I gotta show this to everybody. It makes me so, it makes me happy. I want to make, I want, and I want you to be happy too. This is how. That's by the like, that's what the Wednesday whatnot is. It's like just a, here's a list of five things that made me happy this week. But this is what God the Father does. He says, you want to want to want to know what makes me happy? My son Jesus. Now that's the doctrine of the Trinity. This is beautiful. The Father gives the Son. The Son delights to be sent by the Father. The Son returns to the Father. The Father and the Son send the Holy Spirit. All of it for us. Can you imagine? Maybe one last thing. This was worked its way into the sermon uh, this week, and it is that uh, that you know normally when we start to think of the love of God, we think of the love of God in Christ, which is right. It's because Jesus Jesus makes known the Father to us. So Jesus shows us the Father. He sends us the Spirit, and so forth. But but I think sometimes we 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 might slip into this idea that like God the Father is the God who's angry and God the Son is God who's kind and God the Holy Spirit is God who's indifferent or something like this. And we want to try to avoid that. God the Father loves you. God the Son loves you. And God the Holy Spirit loves you. If, if someone reminds me in the, in the comments, I want to post up a quote from the large catechism where Luther is summarizing the creed and he says, Look here, God gives himself to us. The Father gives himself to us with all of creation. The Son gives himself to us for our redemption. The Holy Spirit gives himself to us with the Word and our, and our sanctification. This is great. This is great. That God does not... He's not there watching. He's here working. 
and all of it for our good. Well, there's a few rambling thoughts on the sublime, blessed, holy mystery of the Holy Trinity. God be praised. And thanks for being part of the Sunday, Sunday drive home.